Chelsea in the quarterfinals of the Emirates FA Cup at Riverside Stadium. Well, one, one game away from away from Wembley, both fans. One game away from Wembley. Leave all. <laughs> um, but yeah, very big game on um, tomorrow. A sold out Riverside, full of our fans in fact. Because obviously with um, Chelsea's ongoing problems off the pitch, which I will mention shortly, um, it's going to be mostly us. Uh, on sat- uh, tomorrow both fans so it's going to be a great atmosphere like I said sold out um, just hope for another memorable Riverside night you know and just enjoy the occasion uh, and the game of course so um, we'll get on to that in a sec obviously we'll start off with the last game out and we finally broke our duck away from home so to speak uh, well not the duck off our backs pretty much uh, with that 2-0 win away at Birmingham City at St Andrews in midweek um, to be honest the game you know um, you know, Birmingham had a couple of chances at the beginning of the game, but after that, we completely dominated. I mean, we got the goal um, midway through the first half through uh, Alan Connolly's second goal for the club, even though it took a huge deflection off uh, the Birmingham defender, Nico um, Gordon, I think. But it's a still Connolly's goal regardless. I mean, good play again from both Balogun and Dyke Seal to set it up. Um, and we were through with it, and Balogun again had an absolutely tremendous game. I mean... Um, He'll go on to the goal a bit, but he should have should have had one uh, just before half time, and his ref took too long before eventually the flag did go up for offside. But when I looked at the replays again, it probably was. But I don't know why the linesman left it too late. To be fair, um, but eventually you know Flo did get his reward with an absolutely tremendous curling goal to um, seal the points for us. And um, I think I think it's come to a point now where Flo Balogun has really definitely come to his own now for the brother. You know, kept coming on loan from Arsenal. There was that, that potential there. He's just been recently called up to the England under 21 squad as well, along with Jed Spence, who is uh, obviously at Forest at the minute. And he's doing doing well the last couple of games. And really, has, you know, brought, you know, Falao and Balogun has done well. Um, Birmingham had a man sent off very late on. Uh, Christian Pedersen sent off for a second book of offence uh, just to end the game. And uh, we finally picked up a winner away from home in the league, which was a rarity, you know, for the last six away games we uh, never managed to win. We did eventually get one. So, the league's put to the start for now, obviously, until uh, after the international break, which will be after this game. Um, but we now focus our attention to a possible uh, trip to Wembley, uh, you know, if we uh, do get past Chelsea in the cup. But we go into this game, obviously, you know, Andras Barras still missed the game again due to illness, so hopefully, you know, I think that was the reason that I probably think that was the reason why Chris Wilder left him out of the Birmingham game, so he'll definitely be hundred percent fit for this game coming up tomorrow. So I'm hoping fingers crossed we do see Andras for last um, tomorrow. But obviously we're still going to be without both Piero and McGree for the game, obviously, because I think like I said in my previous previews, I think McGree will be back with us um, for the Peterborough game after the international break. So we're still be missing those two. Um, but apart from that, you know, we're good to go. Um, it, was, it was great to see Dyke still back for because we definitely missed him these last two games. Um, as as me Dyke still, but yeah, now we go to our opponents uh, in this uh, quarterfinal tie. That means Chelsea, uh, of course, like I said, they're having their own problems off the pitch at the moment. But on the but on the pitch, there uh, though, they stuck their ground. You know, they're ignoring the problems they're having um, in the current circumstances off the pitch at the moment. Um, don't get me wrong, Thomas Tuchel is doing a very good job there at the moment as their manager. They're currently third, third place in the Premier League um, in the last three games, actually. Well, not the last three games, but in the last round, they um, did struggle again past uh, Luton Town by three goals to two in the uh, round of 16 before, you know, um, before they put it us, really. Uh, last game in the league for them, obviously, they beat Newcastle United by one goal to nil for that late uh, Kai Havertz winner. And then the last game out for them, they managed to steal their place in the uh, quarterfinals of the Champions League by getting past Rio by two goals to one. Um, so, you know, I'm not, go- I'm not going to go into fair, de- fair detail of uh, the, um, the off-the-pitch situation with Chelsea at the moment, but um, they must be able to, you know, that's their own problems and that hurt Sam. So, but, you know, they have got good players in the squad and we know that, you know, um, they do like to spend big and uh, the players have got certainly got you know, they're, <clears throat> they've definitely got players that do have genuine quality and they're among their amongst the best. Um, it, it depends who they pull out as well tomorrow, considering we're a championship side and they're a top flight 
Premier League team. It'd be interesting to see who Chelsea do pull out in the starting lineup. Um, obviously we've got well, big strong forwards in there like Romelu Lukaku, for example. Kai Havertz, uh, Kai Havertz who I've just mentioned. Um, Timo Werner, and you've got Christian Pulisic as well. Uh, Mason Mount as well in as well, in there as well. You got the likes of uh, Antonio Rudiger in the heart of their defence. Uh, Malin Sarr, who's just come into the uh, first team fold at um, Chelsea recently. Um, and then you look at say that Aston Aquetta, Marcus Alonso, Jorginho, and Golo Kante. I mean, all those players um, are, are match winners, to be truthful. And it looks like whatever team you know that Thomas Tuchel picks to play against us tomorrow, um, we're definitely going to pull ourselves, you know. Um, Give ourselves a life go at them. I mean, as long as we give 100%, I don't care. Um, it's all about, you know, the match at the cup at the end of the day. As long as we give 100% out there, I'll be happy. Um, but obviously, this will be our first time playing against Chelsea since we played them uh, back in 2017, which was obviously, um, it was the time as well where our relegation from the Premier League was confirmed, where they beat us at Stamford Bridge by three goals to nil to confirm our relegation back down to the Championship. So, and Alistair Brown used to stay on one of the um, four Borough Season Review Borough Season Review DVDs that I used to have. Usually, um, playing against games against Chelsea will bring only heartache, but I'm hoping, you know, the fingers crossed, you know, that we, we do grind out a result and hopefully, you know, the day out of Wembley will obviously it was obviously it was good, but like I said, most of us will probably want to concentrate on the league, but it should be another good night, you know. I saw that Riverside, like I said again, and hopefully, you know. If you don't um, invite Chelsea in that too much, that, that too often, and like um, give them more possession of the ball, and we go on to play our own game and treat them, with, treat them, you know, like any other opponent we have this season, you know, well, we do have a good chance. I mean, who says that never? You know, we knocked out Man United, we knocked out uh, Spurs. Who say we can't knock out Chelsea and hopefully, you know, make a good effort of it? We'll have to see on Saturday, though. Borough fans won't win. That's the hard reality of supporting this local football club really isn't it uh, leave me your thoughts and predictions in the comment section below for fans don't forget to like share and subscribe